You are now watching Zach Lesage, the best place to learn about competitive Pokemon TCG. Let's get it. What's poppin' peeps? Welcome back to the channel. Zach Lesage here. I'm here with my shiny new blue hair, uh, chilling with the top 16 decks from the most recent late night series. We saw 300 plus players playing in this event, and I'm always so happy to see these Monday events reach the level that they're reaching and players having fun and playing for prizing. Uh, the goal of this video is to kind of break down the decks that did well at this event. Just because a deck does well at this event doesn't necessarily mean it's going to do well at the next event. Just because there's a deck that's not on this list or didn't do well at this event doesn't necessarily mean it's a bad deck but i'm just here to try to share um exactly how the players did well maybe share some of their matchups if it's an interesting uh choice or anything else like that and i will have all the links to the standings in the description so check that out give this video a thumbs up to help boost the youtube algorithm subscribe to the channel let me know in the comments below what your favorite deck that you see in this video is and if you are um a player that made top 16 at this event by all means feel free to chime in the comments let me know what's going on with your deck why you chose those cards all right let's uh jump into these decks so here you have it, the top 16 players. I mean, there's a lot more players, and if you want to look into it, like I said, we will have the link for these standings in the description below, and there's a lot of really cool decks that made Top Cut at this event. Um, unfortunately, this event wasn't streamed. I had a bit of a business call for the top 16. I asked everyone in the top 8. There wasn't really much interest of in people streaming their games, so it's something that we might have to uh, revisit in the future. I want to definitely stream this event for everyone, but if uh, it's too much of a hassle for players to stream their games and focus on their games i totally understand it that being said the structure of uh, how it's going to work i'm going to talk about a deck uh kind of give my thoughts on how i like their list or not that that's necessarily um not a good thing a bad thing it's just my opinion on their deck um so i'm gonna give my opinion on a deck it's my youtube channel we're gonna give an opinion on a deck um but usually it's all in uh, good fun like i said if you are a player that did make top 16 at this event or if you have any insight on any of the reasons why they might have played a tech card or a certain way or anything else like that everyone has their own player preference so we're gonna start off with augusto here um augusto playing jolteon vmax I think uh, the Jolteon VMAX deck has largely seen a lot of success. Uh, as you can see, there's a lot of Jolteon decks that um, really, really, really did well at this event. Max Thunder Rumble doing 100 damage to the active, 100 damage to one of your opponent's bench Pokemon. With um, They have to have damage on it, so you use Quick Shooting or Zigzagoon. You could lower your energy requirements for that attack with Elemental Badge. You got the Path. Like There's a lot of things going for this deck, and I think uh, Jolteon VMAX has proved to be a very consistent deck, and it's seen a lot of success at these late night series events. Um, I'm looking at this list and I honestly have no issues at all with it. I think this is, uh, if anything, this is my, the exact list that I would be playing um, for this kind of deck, except I don't like the one capture energy. Like, let me know what you feel about the one capture energy in the comments. Like, I think it's better to be a lightning energy because I don't think you're ever going to find it. There's no way to search for it. Um, I know it's great to get out Jolteons, but it's not great mid-game because you already should have everything that you're looking for by mid-game. So, I don't know, I don't I don't feel like the one of Capture Energy. Maybe two or three I could maybe uh, reason with a little bit more, um, but that's my particular take on it. I mean, I, I, I'm going to be covering a Jolteon VMAX uh, video. I should be covering it later this week, uh, Deck Profile, just to kind of show you exactly what's going on with the deck, uh, play around with it. Beyond that, it is one of those things where um, I've covered it a few other times and we have a lot of gameplay with it. So if you need to learn a little bit more about Jolteon, we got a lot of resources here. Um, I do want to kind of check through the matches to see where they saw success. So um, obviously, if you're going to play against a Lightning Week Pokemon, that's cool. Lost to Mew, kind of went through, lost to Rapid Strike. They ended up losing to Jolteon. I find Jolteon Mirror is a little bit of a awkward one. So I can see how they made it, um, although they did quite well against Single Strike. So maybe Jolteon is a much more better position than we think it is. So shout out to Augusto for the great performance. Uh, we have Matthew44 playing MuV Max. Uh, MuV Max, we're looking at the list. Uh, four, three, four, two, one. The goal of the deck is to use Cross Fusion Strike, copy uh, different attacks such as Techno Blast or Melodious Echo or Psychic Leap. Uh, so having those opportunities for only two energy requirements using alice's sparkle to get those energies accelerated and of course you have genesect to draw extra cards i mean looking through the list so far um everything looks great i think the only difference is from my list uh and i i literally i have a mu v max 
video coming out later today at the time of recording of this like it's one of those things where if it's wednesday for you wherever you are or for me i'm uploading this video wednesday at noon eastern i have a mu vmax deck profile and gameplay video at uh 6 p.m eastern and it's one of those things where this list is one card off i play two rose tower in my list they play one old cemetery and one rose rose tower that's personal preference when it comes to a list i think that seems really cool um i do want to see their run i really like their list overall in general i think it seems great um Mew Mirror, Mew Mirror seems good. They also beat a Gengar. That's a solid run. Uh, they hit three Gengars uh, to go to 6 3, had a solid run, and then they ended up losing to Jolteon. Jolteon can stick you with a path, which is really tough. So, I mean, if they got stuck with, stuck with path, that's cool. But um, shout out to Matthew44 for the great uh, finish. We have uh, Igor, uh, Igor Tosic, Igor Totizico. I'm really bad at pronouncing names. I'm sorry if I butchered it. Um, we're going to see. I, I have definitely been a huge uh, Gengar fan. So Gengar VMAX is all about using Fear and Panic and GMAX Swallow Up, powering it up with Single Strike Roar. Kind of a beatdown deck. Um, I really... Uh, I, I don't want to be like, oh, there's one that popularized or anything, but I, I, I think I was one of the first people, if not the first person, to bring Path to it. I just covered this deck on Monday, um, so check that out. I have my full Gengar uh, Path deck that I was able to win a tournament with last week. And my teammate and really good friend, Gabe Smart, was able to win another 100-plus person tournament and uh, make top four at a $1,000 in real life event. Um, so Gengar is really just aggressive and trying to get knockouts for your opponent having V Pokemon in play. And I mean, I went into it into the video. I mean, I think this list seems pretty solid. Um, I don't have any issues with this list. I like going more path for Duraludon and stuff like that. Uh, but overall, this looks like very similar to the core that I played. I think it's like two cards off where I cut a Hiding Darkness energy and I'm trying to see where the other cut's coming from. I'm not, oh, it's an extra Gengar, I think. Either way, I think this is like two, three cards off from uh, my list. I'd, I'd like to see what their kind of run was. So they beat Duraludon, they beat Homemade Biscuit. Homemade Biscuit usually plays something crazy. We'll see what they played. Uh... Galarian Zapdos, Galarian Moltres, Clefairy Moltres. Really interesting deck. Maybe just didn't get set up. Jolteon. Uh, Jolteon's a close matchup, so they lost to Jolteon. They had a very good run. They probably lost a Mewtwo to dead drawing. Um, couple Jolteons. I play a single strike Urshifu. That might have helped in the matchup. Lots of Jolteons in there. And they lost to the Suicune and Ludicolo, which I think Suicune and Ludicolo is close, so it's completely understandable. Shout out to uh, Igor for uh, the solid run. All right, uh, we're going to be moving on to Victor. Uh, Victor with another Mew VMAX deck. We've already covered over Mew VMAX, so we're just going to kind of brush through this one. Um, I think this is literally the exact list that I posted the other day, uh, or the one that I'm posting later on tonight, wherever it is. And I posted this one on uh, my video. I think this is just like the ideal Mew list for any kind of uh, metagame. So love the list. Really would not change anything. <laughs> I, I think this is uh, currently my 60. And when I say it's currently my 60, I mean... The list that I have on my PTC Geo account is the same one. I think this is a pretty common uh, deck along a lot among a lot of players. So solid job to Victor, uh, recognizing that with a solid, uh, solid, solid deck. So playing against a random deck based off the zero five, probably not the create. Uh, yeah, Cryogonal Cry uh, Gradon probably struggles a little bit. Ice Rider Jolteon beating the Sableye and Teleon is tough. Mew Mirror lost to Jolteon somehow went through double Gengar. That's uh, kind of crazy. Uh, <laughs> And then beat Zhao with the with the Sableye and Teleon, and then beat it again with Sableye and Teleon. That's kind of a crazy run for all these dark decks. This is why I like playing Mew um, a lot. Just as really well folded in the top sixteen against Jolteon, but that's totally cool. Solid, uh, solid run overall. Um, okay, we're gonna move on to Husaman. Um, so shout out to them for playing E Turn. I think E Turn is a great choice. Um, if, if E-Turn wants to load up. There we go. Uh, so E-Turn, no Umbreon, playing Weezing, chilling off with the 4-3 E-Turn. I think we've seen quite a few lists work like this. This might have a better Mew matchup thing than Gengar does. Um, so that's probably the reason why I see a few play people playing E-Turn. Also relatively easy to play, plus Galarian Weezing. I like this deck. I think it's really cool. Um... I, I don't think there's really much that I would change about this. I like Umbreon and Weezing, but maybe it's better just to play Weezing. It might be something that I need to uh, test out a little bit more. Um, let's see how their run went. 
Because it's always interesting to see, and you can always check this out on your own if you don't necessarily want to see. Um, they hit a few Mews, were able to beat Mew. They lost to Blissey, which I mean, maybe, uh, I, I don't know, maybe Blissey just healed everything off and they weren't able to get around Path. Gengar is a tough matchup. Uh, was able to kind of come back, losing to Duraludon. Um, so interesting that they lost to Duraludon. I would have thought that uh, Duraludon would have been a little bit better because they only play the three hutting darkness and you could just go darkness, but uh, it is what it is. And uh, that was a solid uh, play. Uh, Grant Manley, one of the best players in the entire game. And someone that I'd like to consider a friend playing Jolteon VMAX. Uh, we see that they're playing a very similar list to what uh, Lindsay from the Shuffle Squad has been playing with the Palpad and Escape Rope. I'm not a huge fan of Palpad, but I do like Escape Rope. It's just me. Um, obviously, Grant likes it. I think Jolteon VMAX, solid deck overall. And you can see that all lists are probably only off by a card or two. I want to really see their run, uh, something new that we're adding. So, loss of Single Strike, that's acceptable. Lost to Victini, I think that's also acceptable. Had a heater. So, going from 2 2 all the way up uh, to 1 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9, 10, 10, 2, 2, 2, 2, 2. Uh, 10 to that's what you're gonna see um when you give a good player the opportunity to play games um and they lost to Duraludon. i think Duraludon could go either way so um that's also understandable it's crazy when you see the top cuts and you're like how did the mew beat the wheezing deck twice in a row uh, we're gonna have to go back there um we got mike morden another one of my homies playing the jolteon v max deck so very different deck here you see that there's um judge in the deck I don't know how I feel about Judge, but maybe the whole goal is to go Path and Judge instead of Marnie. That's what we got going on. Um, and then they play the Capture Energy. I'm not a fan of the Capture Energy. Don't know how I feel about Judge. I mean, the deck is disruptive enough, so if you're able to go Fan of Waves, Judge, Path, you're probably chilling. Um, I'd love to hear, uh, Mike, if they, if Mike, if you're around, let me know what you feel about the judge. If anyone has the, uh, ideas on what the judge is, judge the cards and we don't see it too much. Each player shuffles their hand into their deck and draws four cards. Uh, so I think that could be working really well with Path to the Peak. So I like the list. I want to see how their run went. So when it came down to the run, um, they went 3-0, lost to 1-3, went 6-3. And then won five straight uh, to kind of go cr like just absolutely insano mode. Losing it to Joshua Sutherland, who is unstoppable with those intrepid swords. Cracked out of their mind. Um, I think when you play only three path, you struggle a little bit against uh, Turbo Zashin. Uh, moving into the top eight, we have X Andy X uh, playing Duraludon. Duraludon's all about using Skyscraper, stopping your opponent's Pokemon that have uh, special energy in play. And I think it's a it's a generally powerful deck. I like the choice of the different stadi or supporters that you have, especially with the Pokegears. So I like the Flannery, the Caitlyn. I think this looks like a solid list. I personally like the list that have a little bit more healing in it. Um, but that's my personal preference when it comes down to it. And I mean, I'm not necessarily a huge Duraludon player. Maybe it's better in the future uh, with Arceus V-Star. We'll have to test that out, but we'll see how that plays out. Um, I want to see how X-Andy X. So started off with the 5-0, lost the game, went 6-0, fell down a little bit, 6-3, went 4-0-1, four, um, only to lose to uh, Jolteon. So a lot of decks are losing to Jolteon. Uh, Jolteon's been able to spike a lot of players out of uh, the top cut in general. I mean, this event had a lot of Jolteon in it. Uh, when we're looking at like the metagame, we saw that Jolteon was the number two play deck, so 13%. It had a 57% win percentage across the board, which is crazy, crazy good. Uh, so we're going to go back to the standings, and we're going to go check out Ajolt. Ajolt is the late night series two season champion. Um, they were able to beat Azul, so playing Duraludon. I like this build of uh, the Yale Towels, Crushing Hammers, all that. Really, I think this is the same list that uh, Cal Connor and a lot of other players have been playing. I don't know if they play Escape Rope or if they play Switch, but I think Escape Rope's also cool here um, against the Gallery and Weezing decks and stuff like that. So, solid uh, solid list as always. And uh, started off as one... Oh, they had a really weird run. They went 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 5, 3, 1. Uh, so, I do make 5, 3, 1 advance. I, I do allow them to advance. And uh, they went 5 straight, beating E-Turn. Eter must have been a tough one, but then again, losing to Jolteon. So maybe Duraludon's been a little bit figured out, and Jolteon is a way to get around it now. Maybe all the healing cards makes it a little bit easier for uh, that deck to uh, win. I'm not sure. I'll have to figure that one out. Uh, but shout out to Ajolt, as always. We have Ultra NKO playing another Jolteon deck. I feel like we talked about a Jolteon a whole bunch. 
I like this list a lot. I'd like to see another path to the peak. Um, I'm not sure where there's the extra spot. I think it might be a professor's research um, is where that extra spot's coming from, but I'm not sure. Um, either way, I think this is like 59 out of 60 cards. The list that I like, I like four P path um, in this format, especially when it comes to Mew and just other random decks. Um, I want to see how that worked out for them. Another Josh Sutherland um, crushing out these uh, decks. I mean, a solid Swiss run at the 7 1 1. Um, kind of beating any, everything and anything in there. And then uh, Jolteon Mirror is always going to be tough. You can see that Jolteon really struggles against itself. Like the mirror doesn't necessarily feel super skill based. To me, it feels kind of weird. Uh, we have Inferno Hippo um, playing the Suicune Ludicolo deck. And I feel Suicune Ludicolo is this really weird deck overall that uh, Kim Pobega really brought back. This is not playing their version with cross switches. The goal of this deck is to Blizzard Rondo, get that enthusiastic dance, do some extra damage, and you're chilling. I mean, I wouldn't be surprised if Inferno Hippo lost to uh, Jolteon in the top cut. Oh, they actually lost to Dauber. Dauber playing the Geller and Maltra Surf Edge Sapdos deck. Um, I actually covered that one literally uh, the other day, too. I've covered a lot of decks videos. I mean, two videos a day will definitely catch up. Um, I I'm not sure, like, they lost and tied against a jolteon they just seem to avoid a lot of their poor matchups going eight and one having a bit of a rocky uh phase two but uh overall uh solid 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 job from inferno hippo uh they just seem to uh dodge a lot of matchups well i mean again they could have easily hit all the jolteons that were in uh top cut phase two um so moving on to Josh Sutherland, we're going to see our first kind of new deck in the first bit, um, or deck that we haven't covered so far today. Zashin V, Zamazenta V, I think this is the best budget deck in the game, and I will, again, the best budget deck into the game. If you're looking for an injured to the game, and you don't have a League Battle deck, this is a deck that I would pick up, go to TCG Player, go to Alice Collectibles, go to PTCGO Store, whichever way you're picking up cards, definitely uh, pick those up. You got Zashin V's Intrepid Sword, you're trying to rip energies, draw extra cards, and then you can attack with Intrepid, or you can attack with Brave Blade. Then you have Zama's Undefeated, block VMAXs. Josh typically only plays this deck when it comes to events and always sees success. Um, when it comes to their run, I want to see what they ran into. Inteleon seems normal for them to beat. They probably ran their opponent out of path. Decidueye probably is... I don't even know how they won. Then they ran into Victini, so crazy that they beat Decidueye. That probably shouldn't happen. Losing to Victini seems normal. Gengar seems like it's a tough matchup, so not sure how they got past Gengar path. This is very close. Like, it's it's really like a whole bunch, like, where their Swiss was, like, really choppy up till round five. And then Josh was able to overcome it, um, going uh, six and three. Had a really strong uh, phase two being able to uh, go four and one and then just hit Jolteon, Jolteon, and again, of course, getting knocked out by Jolteon. Um, so great job to Josh. Um, definitely one of uh, my favorite players in the game. We got Dauber2723 coming in hot with the new Galarian Sir Fetch deck. Um, I did cover that one, like I said. I think that uh, NRG Eli, or I think they were the one that came up with it. Um, if not, they were the one that won the underground and kind of popularized that deck. I really like how this deck works. You're supposed to uh, draw cards with Chinchino and Snorlax, get energies in your hand, drop either one of the birds, and then you could swoop in with a Sir Fetch if you have enough fighting energies in play and attack with, uh, I think I think it's meteor smash um kind of feel like, like a fight and a fighting and dark version of the hoopa maltras kind of deck um and I, I like how this deck plays out i think it's really good so um i don't necessarily need to go in too much more strategy with that i just covered the deck so check that out um but i do want to see how their run went for a deck like this because i told my friends this is the deck that this is the deck that i'd be playing um had i ran into something so they beat me because it's weak to dark weak to fighting i don't know what gabriel fernandez was playing same deck so they lost to mirror uh, single strike, I wasn't sure entirely how that matchup would go, but I mean, I guess you have single prize card Pokemon and you can maybe overcome their board. Again, weak to fighting, weak to dark, weak to dark. Probably can beat them because they're a two, three prize card deck. Weak to fighting, um, weak to, uh, I mean, I, I think Victini probably struggles against any kind of uh, single prize card deck or deck that can be turned themselves into single prize card deck. Then they hit Jolteon, they decide to tie into cuts. So really strong eight and one, 
uh, wins two to put them to 10 and one, and then ties three to make it into top cuts. They beat Sableye, which I think might be a tough matchup. The Suicune deck probably seems kind of even, maybe. And then they lost to Jolteon, so they must have had a poor, some poor draws. But had they made finals, they would have hit Jolteon again, and they likely would have won the event. So we have uh, two last uh, players. We have TCC Andrew W. Uh, I think that's Team Top Cut Comics uh, from Berwyn. Um, again, we see this list uh, with the one capture energy. Everything else looks tight, perfect. The way that I like seeing Jolty on this, I don't know how I feel about the one capture energy. It drives me crazy as a player. Um, and that's just like maybe my deck building. Like, I, I'm, I'm turning into a cranky old man. You know what I'm saying? Like, I've been playing Pokemon since 2005. I don't know if I like the one capture energy. There's nothing wrong with it, but I think that it might be better as a lightning energy. I'm more scared that it's going to bite you in the butt than help you. Um, this is, a, this is a player that made finals of the tournament, so of course they're going to have a really strong run. 7-2 and two in Swiss, uh, really only losing to Mew and uh, Dauber, who we just covered, playing that Galarian Surfetch deck. Had a really strong run, uh, Phase 2. I Single Strike does not seem like it beats Jolteon all the time, which is kind of crazy. They were able to beat the Mirror, the Duraludon. They were somehow able to get past the fighting deck. I don't, I, I'd love to hear that story. And then they lost in the finals to Jolteon. And who did they lose to? None other than Zach Cohen. I think Zach Cohen already won a late night series. So they might be the first player to get two wins. Zach, if you're watching this video, let me know if you are. I'd love to hear some uh, late night series lore because I can't keep up with it. Again, shout out to TCC Andrew uh, for making uh, the finals in this event. But let's go into Zach's list. I think Zach... Um, this, this is a list that I like more. There's there, The capture energy is not there. So to me, I'm just like, maybe the consistency issue with the capture energy was biting Andrew in the butt. I don't know. Um, their, their Swiss run was 7-2. and two. They only lost to a Sableye. That could happen. Uh, maybe they got the Galarian. Do they play the Galarian Weezing? Yeah. So maybe they got Weezing out and just locked them out of the game. They lost to a Victini. I think that matchup's pretty close. Draladon, Gengar, again, beating all these decks. Mirror match is close. They actually lost to Andrew, who made finals. They were able to go through kind of a normal top cut run, and they were able to beat Jolteon. So overall, really great players, really get great runs. Um, play in the Lanite series, everyone. It's really one of those things where there's not really too much else that you can do right now when it comes to Pokemon play until we get official playback. Uh, these events are the largest in the game right now, and it's totally free to enter. If you've got any questions, let me know in the comments below, but i totally love to... Uh, See some fresh faces in there. I know a lot of people are like, yo, if I played this deck in that tournament, how would I do? There's only one way to find out. You could become the late night champion just like Zach Cohen or play swell and make yourself in the video like everyone else in the top 16. Well, that's what we got going on for this video today, peeps. Hopefully you enjoyed it. Like I said, let me know your favorite decks out of these decks in the comments below. Love to hear. And if you also got any suggestions for any content, whether it's this format with fusion strike next format with brilliant stars let me know i'm uh definitely uh trying to change things up as we approach 10,000 subscribers um so that being said i'll catch up with all y'all later peace out have yourself a great day i truly appreciate you taking the time out of your day to watch this video it means the world to me and my goal with this channel is to spread my love of the game and knowledge with our entire pokemon tcg community if you haven't already help signal boost this video to other pokemon tcg fans by liking it sharing it with your friends, and subscribing to the channel. Hopefully we reach our goals really soon. Check out this recommended video and have yourself a great day. Thanks.